sometimes it's really easy to jump into all of the buzz going on around a situation and kind of lose sight of exactly what's going on or if we even really understand the situation in question. Today I want to talk about the recent Unity situation, talk about why this is such a difficult position for devs to find themselves in and why it isn't as easy as just jumping ship from Unity. And this video isn't exactly meant for those devs. Those devs know the difficulties. They know how hard of a decision it weighs before them is, and they know all the complexities that it will involve. This video is aimed more so at the normal everyday Joe who has somehow found their way into this debate due to the spreading of the story into the mainstream. This video will seek to enlighten and share as much information as I can as someone who's worked in these softwares about why it isn't as easy as just jumping from one software to the other, why it isn't something that most dev teams can do, and why the Unity situation is overall just a really bad situation for indie devs as a whole. This is a video that is meant not to convince you to do anything or convince you to go scream at someone or not to scream at someone, but rather I would like it if people could just understand a bit more of what is going on behind these devs. In, in the background, what's driving their decisions to stay or not to stay, and how difficult of a choice it is, because it isn't as easy as just going, well, this has happened before, Unity has done it before, why haven't you jumped to Godot, or why haven't you jumped to Unreal? It isn't that easy, I hope to be able to explain and give examples of why it's not that easy. So let's start this video off with a very quick disclaimer. If you are a new dev, and you're watching this video still, as I tried to make clear in the intro, this video is not exactly meant for game devs. Game devs are a very small population, and I very much doubt this video will reach many of them. But if you are a game dev or you're looking forward to a future in game dev, I fully, fully support starting with Godot. Godot seems to be the future of game development. It seems like Unity is going to continue to do shit like this, and Unreal is going to continue to do stupid shit. Godot is most likely going to improve and continue to improve because it's open source, much like Blender did. So I very much think if you're brand new and you're debating what engine to use, Godot is probably your best choice. But if you're not, here's where the complexities show up. And here's what really the, the point of this video is. First thing we need to understand as consumers of games is that games take a long amount of time to produce. This is true from an indie team and a large massive team, but mostly from an indie team. From an indie team, most indie teams are designing their games, developing their games as a secondary hobby or passion. Yes, there are indie studios that are like actually well funded and they do it as a full blown job, but they're not exactly the forefront of things. Most indie studios are like hobbyists. These hobbyists might have spent four, five, six, or less, three, two, one, doesn't matter, years on their project. And to tell them to jump from Unity to another ship after years in development isn't exactly a copying and pasting of a file. And then here's the part where I know someone in the comments section is going to sprint to go, well, did you hear that uh, ChatGPT developed a new way to completely take a Unity project and move it perfectly to Godot? Yeah, I've used the thing. It's awful. It's awful. Anyone who has used it knows that it's not a solution. It's something that works occasionally for really simple code in really simple situations, but most of the time falls completely short because it's just GPT front end. And if GPT front end could write entire games codes, then game designers probably wouldn't really have too much of an existence right now because it can't, at least not at the moment. So you can't really, with any real reasonable of a doubt, transfer these, these partially started projects over to a different engine. You can do some transfer of C Sharp from Unity to Godot, but that transfer is barely, barely better than writing it from scratch. I say this as someone who transferred a project from Unity to Godot, and it took me 21 days to barely recreate the capacity that I had in Unity in Godot. It's not something you want to do. It's not something, and my project was not large. My project was not large. Rebuilding it from scratch may have been faster. So my point I'm making here is you can't just tell devs to jump ship to Unity. You can't just be like, oh, well, you know, Unity is such a big risk factor. These people are hobbyists. If you're telling them to give up even months of their work, if they're even on six to eight months of work, they can't afford that. 
You're killing the dream by forcing them to jump. They know how dangerous unity is. You don't need to continuously remind them, but they can't afford switching. They just can't. But here's the next step. Let's say we're talking about a different issue in this regard. We're talking about knowledge. I've heard a lot of people talk about Godot C Sharp. And honestly, for good reason, Godot C Sharp is probably the most user-friendly thing for people coming from Unity. But most user-friendly doesn't mean good. And I think people are conflating those two things. Godot C Sharp works fundamentally different than what most Unity people would be used to. It is a new learning curve. Yes, it's a simpler learning curve than jumping straight to regular Godot or jumping to un, uh, Unreal Engine, but it's but it's still a learning curve. It's still a lot to, to, to figure out. And if you're a dev, as I said, this hobbyist, or you're the indie team with five dudes, you can't afford to learn a brand new engine halfway into a project. You can't do it, even if you're starting a new project. If you have eight years in working with Unity, I don't even know if you can have eight years, but if you have several years in working in Unity, you're not going to be exactly a fan of jumping to a new engine on a dime. Yeah, Unity's bullshit is bullshit, but I don't know how many people are going to be willing to give up years of experience they have just to try and use a different software. And I should add here, a lot of people are kind of forgetting something. The, the situation in Godot isn't exactly better than Unity. It misses a lot of Unity's core features that people are just used to. Yes, you can replicate it with giant code blocks and complicated workarounds. And yes, you can completely redesign the Unity, um, the Godot engine from scratch. You can completely mess up your TSCN file and make a completely different editor. But at that point, you basically are learning a new engine from scratch again. So you're, you're back to square one. So your little hobbyist project that should have took you four years is now going to take you six because the first two years you spent on it now are basically null and void because you have to relearn everything from the book. And that's not even counting the fact if you jump to Godot proper, where Godot proper has better documentation, has better examples, has better support systems, has better plugins. If you don't make that jump and you stay in the C-sharp, you are basically dealing with a Unity that has far, far, far less online resources for you to use. And I don't know how many people are going to willingly make that jump and jeopardize their project. I think as consumers, we need to understand this. We need to understand that people just can't do that. Some people can. Some people can drive their project and jump ship. They have the resources. They're a good enough hobbyist. They have the money set aside. They can do that. They can switch their entire project on a dime. But would you rather miss out on new opportunities and new projects and new games just because the dev used, honestly, the best software around for them? Don't, don't bully the dev. The dev is just a poor victim of this situation. Don't pressure them to do things. If the dev decides to go to stay sticking with Unity, that's their choice. They know what they're dealing with. You don't have to be up their ass about it. And um, I want to conclude this with that. I think we should really hate those in charge of Unity. We should hate those who let this happen. We should hate the stockholders who, who all were okay with this. We should hate everybody who apologized for Unity's bullshit. Hell, you can hate me for, I'm technically temporarily saying, hey, people should use Unity. But what we shouldn't hate is the indie devs who are just trying to make a living. They're just trying to do their hobby. They're just trying to make their dreams into a reality. And if an indie dev sits down and goes, I'm going to make my game in Unity, because I know Unity best, and I learned Unity, and I don't feel like learning a new skill, then we shouldn't be the ones to down them after they've been getting continuously hit by Unity already. Let's just support the devs and not support the company. Now, by the way, that's, that's really easy. If you're a new dev and you don't want to support the company, just, just don't make more games in it. You spending money on, on the Unity games isn't exactly helping Unity's cause, especially in indie case. Um, I, wanted, I said I wanted to close out with that statement, but there is one last thing I want to bring up, because I, I recognize it's going to be one of the first comments I get, because I spent most of this video talking about Godot. And the reason I talked about Godot mostly is because a lot of people rightfully understand that Godot is the proper game, to jump, uh, game engine to jump to from Unity. He uses C Sharp. It's very similar in the way it handles a lot of things, and it's all around the best comparable resource. Unreal is not the best comparable resource. I think a lot of people look at Unreal and they go, whoa, that's, you know, the main competitor to Unity. Maybe, maybe it is the main compatible, the competitor to Unity on paper, but the type of games they produce are really different, and I don't think people really process that. Like, Unity is really good in, like, 2D 
Pixel. It's really good in simple, small projects, low bloat indie. Unreal is not good in any of those things. Unreal is the reason you have 75 gigabyte downloads, where Unity will have the two gigabyte download. Unreal is a massive project with lots of shaders, lots of complex code. You know, if you need a good example of comparing Unreal to Unity, look at Signalis, Unity, versus Rise of P, Unreal. Signalis is an indie dev team with two people. <laughs> Rise of P has a much bigger dev team and is very, very graphic-centric. These are, these are different. It's like comparing apples and oranges. And yeah, sure, if a Unity dev goes, oh, I want to jump ship and I jump to Unreal. They didn't do that. It's a different learning curve, completely different system. But what we got to understand is that's not viable for most types of projects being made in Unity. At the end of the day, this is just the rambling of someone who works in both the softwares. I mean, I've done decent amounts of projects in both and tinkered with them quite a bit. So you can choose to trust me or not to trust me. I just wanted to make sure these opinions were known and, and these, these things that occur behind the scenes that make devs' lives more complicated. I don't exactly want to tell you how to think. I don't want to tell you what to say, what to do. I think that's wrong. That's not the job of some YouTuber. That's, that's your job. Your job is to figure out how to think. But I hope this little bit of insight into the complexities behind the situation at least make you think twice before sending some hateful message to a poor dev who's like, hey, sorry, we're stuck in Unity. Um, but this has been Christopher Beast. Hopefully you enjoyed this disconnected tangent, and uh, I'll see you all next time.